Welcome back to Classic Valley Investors. My name is Mario Skonieczny. We're talking about the tankers again. Yesterday, the video was very successful. Thank you very much for all your comments. That's exactly what we need. We need to communicate it with each other about what's going on in the world, in the market, because if we're just relying on re uh, reading the articles uh, in the media, it's, um, you know, uh, m a lot of it is biased to create fear, to create, to create, to make you to click on the articles in the first place. So we got to think for ourselves, um, invest for ourselves and think independently instead of all the other nonsense that's going on in, in the world. So w one thing that I want to say, someone said in the, in the comments, and if you didn't read the comments, go to the prior reader, read the comments. It's really eye opening. Right now we have over 60 comments and you know, we can all learn from each other. But one person said uh, pretty much thanking me for not abandoning the tanker investors when everyone else is abandoning them. You know, I'm not going to abandon you because, first of all, I'm invested in it. And second of all, that's not how I operate. OK, so no, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm going to continue covering that sector. I, I have you know personal interest in this sector and I'm going to keep talking about it. But believe me, very soon you'll 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 have all of those advisors back pointing you to 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 the right data uh, telling you how you should think. Uh, you see, it's easy to look at the today's data. It's easy to read data. What's harder to do is think. It's think about where things are progressing and how those things are eventually going to, um, you know, impact how people think about this sector and, and in the end, the stock prices. What would you say if I told you that the super cycle is coming in the next six months? What would you do? you would probably buy these tanker shares like there was no tomorrow. And what do you think uh, others are going to do the moment they start to believe that the super cycle is coming? They're going to be buying these shares, complete panic buy. And who are they going to buy these shares from? All the idiots sold already. Okay. The people that remain are strong hands. So what do you think is going to start uh, happen to these stock prices? What do you think is going to cause the current people to sell their shares to the newbies or to the uh, ship, uh, shipping tourists? They're going to have to bid up these, these stock prices. And for someone like me, they're going to have to pay me four times the current price for me to sell my shares. Like I said before, I'm not selling no matter what. I'm selling when these shares are four times or five times higher from from today's levels. So right now, when it comes to the super cycle, what we are reading is, yeah, the super cycle might be coming. And, and before we go any further, what is a super cycle? I mean, so to me, super cycle is simply a period of time where these tanker companies are going to earn uh, respectable rates that will allow them to uh, earn good returns on equity and have good bottom lines. And as a result of this, the stock prices are going to follow. So that, that's the way I see the super cycle. But right now, when you're looking at the articles and, you know, of course, reading the analyst reports, uh, w what are people reading? Well, yeah, the super cycle is there. It, it's going to come. Uh, the, the fleet, uh, the order book is low. The, the fleet is old. But you know what? That super cycle is, you know, years from now, 2022, 2024, right? What if that psychology changes? And things in shipping change very fast. Right now, what we're seeing based on all of the comments and based on my observation, the recovery in oil demand is increasing rapidly. People are driving. In my city, there's so many more cars on the road. I cannot believe it. And I'm going to read some of your comments because they're unbiased uh, comments from people all, all over the world. So let, let's go ahead and read some of the comments. Here in New Zealand, uh, we were one of the first countries to exit lockdown. There's so much traffic here that in the first week of lockdown, I started lo loading up on super majors, offshore services, and oil tanker stocks. Okay, thank you from New, New Zealand. In Denmark, we no longer consider COVID virus a threat. <laughs> no shit. Um, everything is almost back to normal. But 
for vacations, many are driving um, either Denmark or Europe instead of flying. Okay, thank you for Denmark. That's interesting because I just had a student come for a lesson yesterday and she came back uh, from Idaho. That's where her son lives. So she drove uh, from Chicago to, to Idaho. And I don't know what she said, uh, whether, whether the trip was like 30 hours or something like so, so. So they chose to drive, right? Because uh, be, because for two things, they they were delivering a car there, and then on the way back they rented a car um, because the husband was afraid of flying. Okay, so it was like a thirty-hour drive, right? Um, so a lot of people are doing that, right? Instead of uh, some people are 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 already going and and flying, and that's why. Um, uh, flying miles are increasing rapidly too but some people are still scared so instead of flying they're driving and they're burning up more more oil right next comment i drive trucks in the western states and the roads are full a lot of people uh, pulling boats as trailers okay next comment traffic has definitely increased in central valley here in california seemed like a lot of people were heading to campgrounds or recreational areas for the long holiday weekend okay that's california uh, now netherlands traffic in the netherlands is close to how it was last year think the demand for oil won't be as weak as many fear that's exactly my point so thank you very much for the comment canada i live in alberta and in april may and half of june it was like a ghost ghost town here. Late June, we started to see a lot more travelers from nearby cities. And now it is like a full blown tourist season as of July 1st. You can't find parking anywhere. Masses of people walking around and traffic jams all through the town. There are people aimlessly driving uh, through the turn around loop at my work so yes people are bored and just driving around now let's go to seattle seeing the same here in the suburbs of seattle traffic getting back to where it used to be thanks for the updates you're welcome next comment i don't know where it is uh, from a small town marius i live in a small town and most people don't give a shit. Uh, the fourth of july was parties everywhere and traffic was like any other normal time before COVID. Yeah, my small town, I feel like people don't give a shit either. Next comment. What I see of traffic in my small Midwestern city is that it is similar to pre-COVID levels. Not much change. Okay, so these were these were the comments that, um, you know, were kind of confirming what I was saying. And then there were a few that, n not a few, much less, that not so like for example in hawaii i live in hawaii so there's no traffic but school is out for summer break and tourism is still closed normally traffic is very bad okay so the hawaii i mean so much reliant on tourism and if we don't have people flying as much as they did before you know that explained the situation and you know like my uh, my student decided to drive from chicago to to Idaho, well, there's no ocean in the middle. You can't just go and drive to Hawaii. You have to fly there, so it's totally understandable. Then I was talking to a friend who lives in Florida, Miami, Florida, and he said that traffic is not that bad, and that also explains well a lot of a lot of uh, businesses in, in 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 Miami are you know tourism hotels and things like that. So I can I can see that Hawaii and Miami are. A little bit different than maybe the rest of the world or the rest of the states in the United States. Um, I also got a comment from the CEO of, uh, no, the president of Scorpio Tankers and then uh, the CEO of Frontline. I pretty much asked him the same thing. I said, hey, you know, there's so many cars on the road. It's, it's, I'm surprised. It's incredible. What are your thoughts? And here's what I got from uh, Scorpio Tankers president. Yes, across the world, even South America is up. It is resulting in the rapid drawdown and correction we talked about a few days ago. It is happening fast enough to actually have rates in Atlantic move upwards. 
this is very good news for Scorpio. Also, last two days, Ultimax rates have moved up sharply. Now the comment from Frontline CEO. I have the same feeling and the number of flights are increasing rapidly as well. Let's talk about flying a little bit because I do believe and I can see that number of flights is going up very fast. But I want to talk about it from two perspectives. One is if, if people are driving more and the gasoline demand is going up more and let's say let's say for right now the jet jet fuel demand is lagging well how can this dynamic be important to us so okay let's say you have a refinery that takes crude oil and refine refines it into different products well when you have a barrel of crude oil you can't just make gasoline out of the whole thing you see when you have a crude of um, a barrel of crude oil many different products are made from that one crude of oil you have gasoline you have diesel and you have other things that are made from that okay so if if you have to use that barrel of crude to make gasoline and let's say you can sell that gasoline but the jet fuel portion of it you can't sell well what do you think you're going to do with this you're going to have to store this until the demand recovers right so we could totally see and we're probably already seeing that that the jet fuel not now has to be stored on product tankers like scorpio tankers until the jet fuel recovers so you would see you would actually see uh, some of the product tankers getting taken out of the fleet to store the jet fuel. Another thing about flying that I want to say is I want to give you an example of that same student that drove from Chicago to Idaho. She's a, doc she's a, she's a doctor. So because she works at a hospital, I always ask her, how, you know, are you seeing any, uh, any increased patients? What's going on? So what I found interesting because she's, um, she's involved with, uh, you know, surgeries. So what, what she is saying is that when this COVID hit first, they, they canceled all the surgeries, right? And then what was happening is they brought the surgeries back, but they were testing people and it was taking them from the moment you tested, it was taking five days for the results. So the problem was that when they tested a person and then by the time the person came for surgery, he could have he or she could have contracted COVID. well now they have rapid testing where it takes 30 minutes to get the results so they obviously test someone before the surgery wait 30 minutes and if the person is negative they go on with the surgery but the reason why i'm saying about this is because that particular surgery industry was completely shut down right and then the industry figured out a way to solve the problem to get it back on track i think the same thing is going to happen with flying the industry has to figure out a way to have people less fearful of flying well how could they do this okay they could have something like that and have a 30 minute testing for every passenger before getting on the flight they have to get tested so then people flying if they know that everyone was tested they're going to be like well they're all negative so i'm going to fly but i don't know if you uh, have read some articles about this israeli company that came up with a one minute COVID test think about this what if the airline industry uses such a tool for one minute testing before you before you load the plane you have to get tested wait a minute and then if you're negative you can fly if you're positive you can't see that's an example of what can happen and i totally see that the the industry is going to figure out a way to make people less fearful of flying what about vaccine you have the entire world the entire pharmaceutical industry 
working non-stop 24-7 trying to come up with a vaccine. If you are bearish tankers, that means you are bearish, the far, uh, smart minds of the world not being able to find the solution. Look at this graph here. There's about 145 vaccines in the pipeline. And as they move through the pipeline process, we already have one that's approved. As months and weeks pass by, the, the pipeline is going to keep moving and eventually they're going to figure it out. Eventually, we're going to have a vaccine and it's going to be faster than we all think. And eventually, we're going to have some kind of medication that's going to make people even less fearful. I mean, some of them already don't give a shit, but some obviously do. So we, as we convert more and more of the population to be less fearful, things are going to become go more and more into normal. Some of you are saying that, oh, you know, all demand is not going to come back because uh, more people are going to be working from home and therefore they're not going to be driving. Okay, well, let's think about this for a second. Before the COVID, one out of five trips was for work. Okay, one out of five. So now, if everything constant, do you think more people will be driving to work versus public transportation or less. It's clearly obvious that more people, those that have to go to work, are choosing to drive. So I can totally see that the number of trips for work is going to be higher. Um, also, just because you are lucky enough to work from home doesn't mean everybody can work from home. Also, how many of you that are working from home now are sick and tired of working from home? And because, because it's lonely, it's depressing, and we are already so isolated from people uh, that you are now itching to actually go back to work. Tell me, leave me a comment below, because I can totally see that. I have a lot of friends that live in New York, because as you know, I'm in the ballroom ballroom dance industry and a lot of ballroom dancers live in New York. You know what I'm hearing right now from them? They're moving out of New York. And if I'm hearing this from them, that means a lot of other people are also thinking about moving out from big cities. And what happens when they move out of big cities? One particular friend that lives in New York in a month is moving to Miami, Florida. What do you think the first thing is going to happen when he moves to Miami, Florida? He has to buy a car. He has no car, okay? There is the public tra transportation in New York is completely different from everywhere in the world. So he has to buy a car, okay? Now, take this and multiply it by hundreds and millions of people moving outside of the big cities and buying new cars, and now they have to drive more. And what about the people that stay in these big cities and don't want to take public transportation? Well, guess what? They might also either have to buy a car or they will be taking Uber, which means more driving, more traffic and less usage of public transportation. And that public transportation still has to be running for fewer people, which creates a lot of more inefficiencies. In conclusion, I think that people are going to be surprised with the recovery for, uh, for the demand in oil. They are way too bearish. Instead of thinking and looking around and talking to people, they are reading biased articles. They are just way too bearish. Now, when you look at stocks of like some airlines and, and cruises and things like that, they are already double from the bottom. What about tankers? Tankers are pretty much at the bottom. They are the, they were, just two weeks ago, they were the most hated sector out of the entire stock market. I think when the, um, when the switch turns, these stocks are going to soar so much to the upside that it's going to surprise all of us. And when you read uh, one of the analysts saying that these stocks are going to be, have 240% upside, in you know 24 months or so i think all of us are going to be surprised it's going to be 300 percent within months not not years that's my rant for today 
Let me know what you think.